the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Prophecy in motion. Prophecy in motion. Rakata preketele mokosi abadadadaba. Now it does not yet appear what we shall be like. It does not yet appear. The curriculum is still in progress. But when the master is done with your life, when you are tried as gold, you will be an object of praise and envy for the nations. Lord, I will pass through the training. I will be built. Make sure you are, you are praying. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1 the Bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight your weight can be your looks your weight can be your designer suit your weight can be your ego and the pride and the arrogance that mediocrity has given you let the lord smash it and bring you to a higher standard hallelujah listen this has been our cry in this place he is the pot and we are the clay whenever you come here you say lord stretch me open me up and change me don't just come here tonight to say wow let's see what happens especially if this is your first time participate and let your heart be open the bible says he is the rewarder of them that diligently diligently that seek him without distractions your will be done Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The reason why success is valuable is because not everybody will ever get it. Are you listening to me? Greatness lies in the hands of those who have endured what others cannot endure while you are praying some people are in the beer parlor let me tell you something we know about the mercy of god but i want to tell you god is also just hallelujah it is the justice of god that takes sinners to hell the bible says do not be deceived god cannot be mocked that means if you don't reap what you are sowing, God is being mocked. Are you listening to me? God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that man will receive it. He said, he that soweth to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. You can choose today to pay the price and so seeds that will the bible says and abraham was all genesis 24 and stricken in age and god had blessed him in all things 
Our parents left curses for us. Many of us are victims of the carelessness of the generations that have gone ahead of us. But you must take responsibility about your life. Otherwise, things will not change. This is why God brought you here tonight. As an indication of your desire to partner with the Holy Spirit in transforming your destiny. And let me tell you something. The kingdom of God operates in a reward system. You will not seek God and later run back and seek other things. As you seek him, they will follow you. God will be unjust if you have to seek him first and then run back to catch up in bringing other things. Uh -uh. As you seek him, those things that men follow will come to you. So open your eyes. Will you open your ears? Then you understand that the Lord is here. This is what God is asking you to do tonight. Open your eyes. Open your ears. Then you understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Bless you. Greet one another. Tell them lectures continue. Hallelujah. Bless you. Be seated. If you don't have a seat, stand. Or sit on the floor. Hallelujah. When it was time for the people to eat bread, Jesus said, tell them to sit down. If you can't sit down, you won't eat that bread. That bread is not just for people. You must sit down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What wisdom is this? Tonight I'm going to be sharing with us on a dimension of wisdom that I believe will fire somebody's spirit. We've been considering the subject of success. Let me tell you something. It's my desire that the least person among us will be like David. Hallelujah. You know, as I look at everyone here, I'm just imagining, I'm just imagining. If God will open your eyes to see how your five years will be like, how your 10 years, some of you are escaping some things forever. Satan notwithstanding. Look, it plays to listen to the Lord. Are you hearing me? He said, Martha, you are distracted and offended by many things. But he said one thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing, one thing is needful. That you sit down at the master's feet. He said, this Mary has desired and this she has found. There is a master key in life. When you find it, you have found it. Hallelujah. What wisdom is this? I want to reveal to us, building from last week's message. Please, if you've not listened to last week's message, get it. Get it is very important. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain. We've been receiving testimonies. A very thought-provoking message that opens you up to the spiritual dimension of success. That lets you know that nothing just happens in this earth realm. There are those who are called the elites in this earth realm. Those who know. There are those who are the victims of the consequences and the decisions of the elite. Hallelujah. And tonight I trust that the word of God will provoke you. Make sure you write. Please, if you are here without a writing material, beg your neighbor. And he told John, he said, write. Although he was in heaven, he said, write it. For these words are faithful and true. Write it. 
A dimension of success that is bigger than science, bigger than philosophy, bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a not a mystery, but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the Spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life it will be programmed automatically to be successful you can't undo it again even if you want to do it hallelujah in chemistry there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions once they happen they have happened this is what is happening to your life there is an irreversible spiritual reaction hallelujah you will become something and then when you become it, those who are running Helter Skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the queue. Bishop talked of a 75-year-old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a batch is given to you. So you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, oh God, you jump this, 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 go back. Many people will go back. The Bible says, it's the thief that follows through the window. Is that in your Bible? Hustling can help you jump through the window. Is that true? But life will bring you back, I tell you. May it not happen when you have children because they will go back to with you. And as you are moving, they will be saying, Daddy, why? Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. Said I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again. He said in the days of Samuel when the word of the Lord was cast. May you be the light when darkness comes upon men. And that light will make kings to come to your rising. Gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising. Like Sheba, they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today. And Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea and come to test him. The entire kings of the earth came together. Solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom. I pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? It's important that we understand the biblical concept of success. I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success. But we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things. Say after me, I received this dimension of wisdom. Say one more time, I received this dimension of wisdom. Grant us this wisdom, O God. Grant us this wisdom. I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success 
in the kingdom number one it means to grow in the knowledge of god and in conformity to his nature and principles the first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car not a house not jeep wrong parameters In Jeremiah 9.23, he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength. Hallelujah. He said, but let him that glory had glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God, to the degree to which you know God, and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles. You are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character the formation of Christ so that you become a visible manifestation just like Jesus the Bible says in him dwelled the fullness of the Godhead bodily in other words he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is hallelujah number two it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life it's not enough to know god it means to experience look at me the bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation not the explanation of the sons of god there are many people who can explain success but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life the world is not waiting for explanations they are waiting for the manifestation hallelujah so success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of god in how many areas success is not just about money and finance no your health your family your relationships it means to experience the blessing of god everybody say the blessing of god in your career in ministry in whatever area of your life that your life will be an example a portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things the biblical portrait of a blessed man is abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is elijah the biblical portrait of the law is Moses. Hallelujah. The biblical portrait of love is John. The biblical portrait of faith is Peter. And so on and so forth. May you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three. Kingdom definition of success. We're talking about wisdom so i want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight number three it means to accomplish your life goals and your god-given assignment success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals you accomplish your god-given assignment he said my meat in other words this is what gives me satisfaction to do and to finish the will of him that has sent me he said lord i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will jeremiah chapter 1 he said before i formed you i knew you i called you i ordained you to be a prophet it means to accomplish your goals in life to do and finish your God-given assignment. One more, number four.
It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success according to the kingdom definition means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly. When your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful. He said let your light so shine before men, not Christians, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of god exploits it means unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment unusual uncommon extraordinary accomplishment Hallelujah. Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge this is the general definition of wisdom wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately we call that wisdom are you there accurate application of knowledge but you see the wisdom i'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition it's a higher realm mark six mark six let's examine this kind this type and this dimension Mark 6. Say after me, I received this wisdom. Are you there? Mark 6 verse 1. Let's hurry up. And he went out from there and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Verse 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. He said, and many hearing him were what? astonished saying from where had this man these things he said and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and through that wisdom what happens he said that even such mighty works i'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth this is not the kind of wisdom you find around the bible says jesus walked in that level of wisdom and when he began to talk they asked him they said from where where is this man coming from and what wisdom is this everybody say what wisdom is this so let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about this wisdom is the supernatural ability 
the supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions. The supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions. This is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the Bible and they commanded exploits. The ability to use the word of God and all the inspirations that come from the Holy Spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have. James 3. I want to take this carefully tonight because I want everybody to understand this. I want us to get it. The Bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom even cries. Wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit. And it says wisdom is the principal thing. Let's look at James 3. We we'll read from verse 13 to 17. But the verse of emphasis is verse 15. From verse 13. It says... Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom. Verse 14. But if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart. That means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. Are you ready? It says... This wisdom descended not from above. So we see the first kind of wisdom. This is the one we are talking about. The wisdom that comes from above. Hallelujah. The apostle is contracting, is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom. Number one, the wisdom that comes from above. This one is given by God alone. You don't read for it. You can't search it out. Let's continue. Number two, he said, but it's earthly. So we have earthly wisdom, human wisdom, what we call common sense. The ability to know that if you touch fire, it will burn you. The ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily earthly wisdom Sophia hallelujah number three sensual wisdom this is the wisdom that you get through study scientific wisdom philosophical wisdom hmm. wisdom that comes through studies hallelujah that's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment. And then the fourth kind of wisdom. The Bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom. This is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld. This is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with Satan. This is the wisdom that was used to build Egypt. A type of Babylon. It was the wisdom that Pharaoh and the Egyptians used. And they accomplished supernatural, extraordinary things. But hear what the Bible says. Verse 17, this is the wisdom we are considering tonight. He said, but the wisdom that is from above. Come on now. Where is it from? It's not from the earth realm. I will show you that you cannot find it. 
it does not have a physical location in the earth realm it's first pure peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you know everybody say i receive that wisdom hallelujah there is this dimension of wisdom and there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today solomon in scripture the bible says that solomon had an interaction with god and he was given this wisdom and the reign of israel during the dispensation of solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight i pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever i pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and Eli who said uh-uh he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said i thought that experience should teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man any kind of man hallelujah solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of israel 12 years of age but he became a king with this mighty wisdom and he ruled for 40 years 12 years how old are you those who celebrated their birthdays how old are you but a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord it's a long reading let me read this is job the bible calls job the richest blessed blessed man in the east he was a great man when the elders saw him they stood up the young men saw him and they bowed their face they could not look at him what dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success read with me 28 surely there is a vein for silver that means where silver is mine has been found by men is that true And a place for gold where they refine it 
Iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is melted out of stone. He set an end to darkness and searched out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadows of death. Listen. Verse 6, he said the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold. He's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said there is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, and the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps, the lion that does not fear any animal, it is not restricted. But he said, even the lion has not been able to discern that place. He put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots. He cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing. He binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bring it forth into light. Verse 12, are you there? Here's the question. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? This is a question. With all the excavations that happen, there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth. Man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom. There are houses that have been built inside the sea. There are bridges that they build across seas. But the Bible says, where is this very wisdom? That with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13. He said, man knoweth not its price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are, this is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it. That although the, the sea represents the abundance of people. Because the Bible says I will give you the abundance of the sea. He said even the sea, those who have worked in abundance, who claim they have found the wisdom. All of the people that Forbes magazine is listing. The Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource. They finished eating animals. They ate plants and grasses. It was remaining only human beings. And mother said, let's start eating our children. Where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people? There will be a replay of that. Yeah. The Bible says it in Malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven and all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed. Let me tell you the truth. If you do not access this wisdom, whatever else you have are just shadows. Are you getting blessed tonight? The Bible says, 15, it cannot be gotten for gold. That means you don't buy this wisdom with money. If you could buy it with money, the wicked wealthy men, including the Illuminati, they will buy everything and be the custodians of it. But the Bible says, this one, even gold, cannot buy it. You can't buy it. It's not the personal possession of any man.
it cannot be weighed for silver it is not valued with the gold of offer and the precious onyx and the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies it says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold 20 whence then cometh wisdom where is this wisdom that everything that men value today cannot buy it this is what Solomon saw and when he caught it every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life my son the bible says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your heart they are life to those who find them i show you a way a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever there are people perpetually forever there are some who have enslaved their generations forever one of it is america 17 trillion US dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the Bible says they can't buy this wisdom are you hearing me with all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments they've not been able to stop war but a 12 year old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation where is this wisdom my god i pray that somebody will get this wisdom solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but a time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air abaddon the place of the dead and death say we have heard its fame with our ears god understandeth his way this is the secret he said with all this confusion that men are having god is saying i know where it is i know where it is because i kept it and i know the place of it where is this wisdom how can you access this wisdom with this wisdom daniel entered a strange land and he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings the same result the same result through the dispensation of three different kings hallelujah praise the lord this dimension of wisdom we're talking about accessing this wisdom now this dimension of wisdom only comes from god the first thing i want you to know about this wisdom in and in accessing it is that it is given everybody say it is given god gives men you don't study it you don't look for it it's a waste of time god gives men hallelujah when you meet his conditions he will give it to you God gives men. Ready? Let me write the conditions for you. The conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom. Number one, you must have a passionate love for God and his agenda. 
the bible says i has not seen nor ear heard neither has it come into the heart of man what god has prepared for them that love him not them that speak in tongues not them that attend koinonia eye has not seen ear has not heard what god has in store for who them that love him we are going to examine solomon's life very quickly before we pray because he's the biblical portrait let me teach you something every time you are searching out for something in life stop confusing yourself go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for the bible says look to abraham your father and to sarah that bear thee he said i called him alone and i blessed him that means as far as god is concerned when you are talking about blessings and prosperity abraham is god's portrait of a blessed man not bill gates not warren buffett not carlos limas hilu not all of those great men thank god for them but he said look to abraham your father and to sarah that bear thee when it comes to wisdom it was given to solomon there are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom daniel different people but we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon the Lord see let me tell you your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service there are many people who serve God but they do not love God they don't have that passionate love they are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment you are in a family where everybody is a Christian so you have to go to church you have to come for koinonia he said and Solomon did what love the lord that means every other thing that he did was because of that love a man can serve god because of wife i hope you know that a man can serve god because of husband a man can serve god because of the whiplash of employment and you just find the nearest church and say ah let me find refuge in this place and rest before i find out what is going on people can serve god for various reasons for car for house for prosperity for job he said but solomon loved the lord do you love the Lord? The first condition for accessing this wisdom. This is why the kings of the earth cannot get it. Because they do not love the Lord. I love you Lord. I love you Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you Lord. I love you Lord. It's from the bottom of my heart. I love you Lord. I love you, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. See, when you give God your heart, not your hands, not your tears, when you give God your heart, I'm giving you a big secret. Many Nigerians do not love God. Many pastors do not love God. They love ministry. They love suits. They want ministry advancement, but they do not love the Lord. Many leaders in this country do not love the Lord. Many young people, hustlers who keep hustling forever, they don't love the Lord. Many fathers, many mothers do not love the Lord. And we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us. Some of you here looking at me don't love the Lord. You love the house of God. You love the people of God. 
You love Christian music, but you don't love the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon loved the Lord. Can that be your testimony? That will say, ah, and Eben loved the Lord. And Paul Maman loved the Lord. Some of you, as you say, and you love the Lord, your spirit will tell you, no way. You say, and you are now willing to love the Lord. Not that you love the Lord. I keep emphasizing this passion for God. Because if you are not rooted in love, success will make you run away from God. Are you hearing me? Success will make you do what? Let me tell you. If you enter real success, it's a double-edged sword. It can kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are levels. The, the problem is many people in Nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful, it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like. And Solomon loved the Lord. That's the first condition. Number two, you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing. You want to access this wisdom you must have what a sincere desire to be a blessing same first kings 3 from verse 8 and 9 god gave solomon an open check he said solomon what do you want me to give you look up if solomon was a nigerian and god says solomon what do you want me to give you his first question will be is he only me will there be any other person with it say no only you he say ha, god you better carry paper and viral let me empty my own life let me tell you what i want the first thing is any day anybody speaks against me let him die one two all the people that have called me a failure prove a point to them is that not true number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will never get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the bible says indeed genesis 12 verse 2 shall all the families of the earth be blessed there are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by working for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love they are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry i told god if you never bless me in this life if i never become successful in this life i may do many things but not loving you is not one of them he has my heart believe me I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I will never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I heard Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry. Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, anything you pray anything you ask me i will give you i mean jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till five minutes to one you will sit down and say lord i'm still thinking okay i remember 
do this for me, for me, for me. I trust God that in the years to come, in Koinonia, our testimony will not just be God gave me tea, God gave me bread, God gave me handkerchief, but that God used me to do this for somebody else. It is at that point we will clap. Right now we are clapping for God change me and we thank you for it. God did this. A millionaire is not one who has one million. A millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million. Oh God, I want this. I want fame. I want power. Give me this church. Oh God, I'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold. I want to wear the one that I'm buying. I'm, oh God, change my story. And God is saying for you or for me or for my kingdom. And God said, well, this, when we get to that bridge, have you heard people say that? He said, when we get there, we'll cross it. You better, God can see your heart. Everybody say, I love the Lord. And I desire to be a blessing. See, can I tell you, if you are looking for success for yourself, you don't need much effort. You know, but you know that. How many clothes can you wear? How many books can you write? But when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God. My ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I've, I, I trust God for the oil of your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you touch me, there will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say you, for because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story. Oh God, say amen. God said no way. You had one shouting amen there. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can he have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God? And you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them. And don't announce it. Build it, put everything and come and tell them this was why God blessed me. You say, if I do this to you, here's the condition. It must be on newspaper. It must be on CNN. All of you must come and kneel down and say thank you. And I will give you the key in front of everybody. That way, they will now know that I'm serving the Lord. It doesn't work that way. How many of you are ready to be blessed? How many of you know that if, if you are successful today, you will give scholarships, you will build orphanages, you will build churches. Let me tell you the truth. Many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the 10,000 you have. Even your tight, you have not been faithful. You just saw 1,000. Hey! 1,000. You can buy palm oil, you can buy salt. Magi one tier. Garif is the half one, said it will reach. Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you all. As you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. 
the way the way Tokumbo is going now Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima, say Fatima, me, I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not said to be a blessing, I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving. Any day I talk about the law of giving, don't be confused. Let me tell you straight to the point what I'm talking about. The law of giving is number one, your tithe. Whenever I talk of the law of giving, it's not some unambiguous thing. Number one, your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12. Let me tell you something. I don't care any other giving you give. Even if you give one billion for any project, if your tithe does not precede your giving life, you only wasted your time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving. Please listen to me. I pray that God will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of God to collect money from you. Because if that is it, you, you will never be successful. This is not about money. It's about maintaining an open heavens. The Bible says, Bring ye all your tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, You will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings. That follow a tighter many people think tight is all about money tight is about giving god first place in your life hallelujah oh how much it's just five thousand even god understands or oh, my father gave his tight for me all these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life say i receive grace to tight be consistent I have envelopes, envelopes in my house. Anything that comes in, I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI. It's not a mystery. The finance department are on perpetual instruction. I don't care money for what is raised in this place. Before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound, one whatever it is, the tithe is taken first when we started the school of ministry the same thing the tithe as i speak to you right now the tithe for the collection of this night is already set there were many trees in the garden of eden but god kept the tithe and told man don't touch it every time you take what god did not give you he will return back or something he will collect some something that he had given you say amen Every time, some of you, you take the tithe, what happens? It will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, 
you you in your mind you even have it in a pen your tithe from march to now that you plan to give god but you have not yet given he said god you look at the heart number two your kingdom investments i'm talking of your offerings i'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of god if you have a business tight you have a church tight you have anything tight tight and you and open heavens so your kingdom investments and then giving to God's servants prophet offerings and giving to the needy these are the things that constitute the law of giving the Bible says in first Kings 3 verse 4 it says Solomon offered a thousand everyone say 1,000 bond offerings say 1,000 look up we are not up to 1,000 in this place do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they cut all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord steal for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you god does not love a cheerful giver alone god also loves a crying giver there is he that weepeth And bearing precious seeds there is he that weepeth there are some givings that you don't just give laughing you will give and cry you will give and call yourself a fool after the service how be it your faithfulness will endure finally under accessing this wisdom ask of the Lord first Kings 3 verse 9 Solomon acts of the Lord Solomon acts of the Lord for an understanding heart James 1 verse 5 the Bible says does any man lack wisdom let him ask of the Lord let him ask of the Lord tonight we are going to be asking I told you this wisdom see this wisdom comes to you from God it's an impartation Solomon discusses with God in the night in a dream the next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom immediately immediately Daniel Daniel, I'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray. Daniel, when the king had a dream, could not interpret it. He said, let's just rest. He rested that night. That wisdom worked. This is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time. Uh -uh. When it comes on you, it speaks at once. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings. Of this dimension of wisdom the operation how does it work I've told you what it is I've told you how to access it how does this wisdom work Proverbs 18 verse 1 the first way is the sacrifice of meditation this is how this this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression what did i say the sacrifice of meditation proverbs 18 verse 1 the bible says true desire a man having separated himself seek it and intermeddled with all wisdom meditation meditation Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to find
find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression meditation Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6 please let's look at it quickly I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us Daniel 2 I cried for many years to the Lord I said Lord give me wisdom give me wisdom Daniel 2 from verse 14 are you there say amen let's read it quickly verse 14 then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok the captain of the king's guard who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon they could not interpret the king's dream look at this wicked king you had your dream and you forgot and you were angry just like many people in Nigeria they blame people for their failed dreams they wanted to be great it didn't happen and now they are angry at everybody listen Daniel said this in verse 15 and he answered and said unto Ariok the king's captain why is the decree so hasty from the king then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel 16 listen he said then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him that he should give him this is what has killed a lot of people in our generation we are in a rush for everything that's why the spirit of wisdom the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives we're in a hurry to make money a hurry to do everything a hurry to get that job a hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with God we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives the Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however he said many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the Lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minute let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly Daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time I will meditate and the Lord will reveal to me and I will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there verse 19 he said then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision when he he had time and he went in the night meditating upon this thing and during the night time not the night moment the night time this thing was revealed to him every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life Daniel said, tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work. Hallelujah. The sacrifice of meditation. Everybody say, I receive grace to meditate. 
Some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation. This is how I get the messages for the week. I spend time, I pray, and I just sit in his presence. Kapo Shatamaya. And allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men. When that wisdom comes, you know accurately what it is that God wants you to do. Hallelujah. Number two, this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's not wisdom that is rehearsed. All of you, some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it luke 21 quickly Somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21, verse 15. It says, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gainsay. Listen, listen. This wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking. It's not something that you have that you say, I have it. I no, the moment you open your mouth, you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm. Hallelujah. And so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision. And many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable. And you keep quiet like Elihu. Suddenly you will open your mouth. He said, open your mouth and I will feel it. He didn't say, I'll open your mouth when I feel it. Open your mouth and I will feel it. Suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom. And they look at you. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. Ah, there is a dimension of wisdom. That when you speak, people will look at you and say, No, this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience. This is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that from today, as you open your mouth to speak, you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom. Many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness, not wisdom. Or what came out was just scientific knowledge. I pray for someone tonight. I pray for someone tonight. May God make that when you meet your destiny helper, the right words that will be upon your lips, that will compel men. There are many people today moving around with business proposals. And they know what books say they should say. But the Bible says, I will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece. Could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work? Could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business? Could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones? Let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 to 20. We're running. Matthew chapter 10. I feel the power of God in this place. We're going to pray this. This wisdom must hit somebody this night. This wisdom must hit somebody this night. Someone must write it in your jota that on this day,
you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking through a man that's why you wait the man and wait the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will share it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men doth not wisdom cry doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success does not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen the third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom how did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness look at me they were in the wilderness there was no source of help but they got wisdom from god and they built the tabernacle in the wilderness brothers and sisters i can kneel down and beg you tonight do not trivialize the power of what i'm telling you there are some messages until you get to certain realms it may not be useful but when you get to that realms you can never be a leader without this you will waste your time there are many frustrated men of god who have power but don't have wisdom it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to be a leader it takes wisdom to be a father it doesn't take age it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to command prosperity it doesn't take years of time it takes this wisdom lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something 
some of these great men like Don Muen and the rest, the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom. It is this wisdom that transported it. There are others whose songs just came from musical acumen. So it will change as time changes. But there are others it comes with a spirit. The wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 it says God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us so he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners communicates his wisdom to us an idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that Solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate, the roommate will never know that something has happened. You just wake up in the morning. Come on now. Not the same person who slept. I pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom. I cried to God years in my life. I said, Lord, I want you to give me this wisdom. This message I'm preaching to you tonight is an old message. It's an old message. I'm preaching to you my experience. I found this thing. And I said, come on, Lord. A 12-year-old boy. Lord, I'm available. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life. Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yet they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody is far older than you. They will say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this. Exploits by this dimension of wisdom. Through wisdom is any house built. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. Through wisdom. There are times I'm meditating. Nobody distracts me. Because at that time, the spirit of wisdom comes into my room and begins to bring illumination, witty ideas, inventions, uncommon solutions that are not known to men. Hear me. Many of you will have, it may not speak now because of the time component of life, but wait until he starts speaking. See, there are some of you, I tell you the truth, Zaria is too small for you. Everybody is watching you, but you know that what is inside you is bigger than Zaria, is bigger than Nigeria. That young man called Zuckerberg, before Facebook went far, there were people who wanted to buy it before the idea became global and they wanted to buy it for 8 billion. He had not even become a millionaire then. He was just, they wanted to price his idea. He said, no, I know this thing will shake the world. 8 billion is too small. At that level, see, I tell you the truth. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I'm out of this country. There are some of you, the Bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of. This earth was not worthy of. You are seated in the crowd. Some of you as you are looking at me like this. That's how one day you will sit down. Wisdom will give you a seat. There are no vacant seats. Only the one wisdom creates. The seats in Nigeria have finished. But wisdom can make room. It can give you a seat. I bring you a message. 
stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry I want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart the Bible says let him ask of God I have seen this in my life in a measure I can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom you will shock men lift your voice and begin to cry Shekete prekete bele re 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 bos Anda prate kata yada basa Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Wisdom is the principal thing Shoko prote kete Thank God for your degree But get wisdom Thank God for PhD But get wisdom Thank God for books But get wisdom Shekete te poko tope Rekete koso telekosa, reko pros keriyerebos. That divine ability to take the word of God and translate it. Come on, pray, sister. Pray, my brother. Pray for the sake of your generation. Pray it. Say, Lord, I always knew I'm not ordinary. Sheko pros tepo shekete. Shake it, 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 it. Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will bring forth things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitation. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. Take it serious tonight. This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can mean the difference between you and other people. Show close compared a Korea top. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Change my life. I'm ready to leave the realm where I am to a higher realm. I am tired of this level of finances. Tired of this level of leadership. Tired of this level of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray right now and say, Lord, I receive a baptism of love for you and grace to bless your people. Lift your voice and pray. A baptism of love. A baptism of love. Beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond prayer meetings. 
Self-centeredness from my life forever. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, kill it. Greed. Self-centeredness. Take it away from my life. That mentality of I, me, and myself. That mindset. You are just thinking of yourself. No, you will never access wisdom that way. I kill self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed departs from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, be gone from us. We are the blessed ones. Empower to bless mankind. 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 Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen, I will read this and we'll take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom. And see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me just read this quickly. Listen, Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding standeth up. Standard, understanding put forth her voice. Listen. She stands at the top of high places. By the way of the places of paths. Listen. She cries at the gates. And at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors, unto you, O oh men, I call. This is wisdom crying, calling for attention, calling businessmen for attention, calling entrepreneurs for attention, calling ministers for attention, calling family people. Wisdom is begging and saying, You have paid attention to other things. Can you not give me your attention? There is a baptism going on in this place this night. He said, all ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of understanding heart. Hear, yeah, for I speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. He said, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing crooked. Wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time 
even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen it says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long-lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say Lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer I tell you the wisdom of God will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh God let it fall, oh God. Wisdom from above. Make leaders with wisdom. Let it fall. Wisdom that will shock the world. Wisdom that will shock the business world. Wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world. Aya. Wisdom that will shock men in your career. Wisdom that will make your degree meaningful. Wisdom to produce a model family. Wisdom to live perpetually in hell. Wisdom to command prosperity. Cry. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. The wisdom is falling. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Open the heavens, oh God. Receive a baptism. Shake it, Boriata. Koinonia, be baptized. With the spirit of wisdom, Koinonia, be baptized with the spirit of wisdom. Koinonia, let it fall. Let it fall. Let business moguls arise from this wisdom. Leaders, the true secret of kingdom success, the true secret of undeniable kingdom success shake it, take it, take it, take it. lift your hands everybody
lift your hands. See. Listen. Listen to me. I tell you something. Take this wisdom from my life and there is no Joshua Selman again. This is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing. If you can believe this, the day God told me I was not on stage, the day God gave it to me, you were not there. I tell you, students of the school of the spirit, I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly, you will receive. You can argue it. You can sit down there and watch others. Or you can humble yourself and say, Lord, this is it. This is it. My spirit tells me this is it. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Out of the abundance of grace that has been given. I want to pray. I pray that as I declare, may it come upon somebody. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you gave me this message. This is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover. This is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom. This is the true secret of kingdom success. We started building last week and I want to pray. I tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, I tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way. At the count of three, I just like you to shout after the count of three. I receive and begin to receive it in your life. It will change your life. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Lord, let it fall. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Shake it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it, a baptism, a fire, a baptism, the fire of wisdom, the fire. It comes from above. Let it change your status, the wisdom of Solomon. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Shake it, 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 it. Be marked with wisdom. Be marked with wisdom. In business. Be marked with wisdom. In your job. Be marked with wisdom. Wisdom to speak. Wisdom to preach. Wisdom to attract wealth. Wisdom to attract honor. Wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last one, but let this wisdom Take you to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Tonight, as many of you sleep, I declare the experience of Solomon. Let it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight.
that business idea you have been praying and fasting for tonight let it come by wisdom in your place of meditation let leadership wisdom come upon you hallelujah I pray for you the same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them you knew that these were Jacob's cattle I pray for you because you have come for koinonia tonight favor has been our mark in this place but to that favor I add wisdom to you I add wisdom to you Go ahead and give God thanks. Go ahead. Thank Him. I tell you, something has happened to you this night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spend time. Spend time meditating. Stop running around. Where are you going? Say, I'm looking for money. No. Go back to your secret place. May God raise wealthy people here. Amen. You know what to do with money, so God is not afraid of giving you. I pray that one favor connection. Don't say, I am young. That's a curse. I pray to you, receive it. Amen. Ladies, don't say we are ladies. Receive it in the name of Jesus. hallelujah listen you are here and you've not given your heart to the Lord what a night that God is releasing wisdom I want to pray for you right now or you have given your heart to the Lord once but you've really found yourself distracting you, are, you have been distracted here and there the author of wisdom is calling you tonight for a fresh start Please make sure you do not hear this voice tonight and just take it lightly because God is doing great things. If you are not born again, you do not have access to this wisdom. I don't care even if you fell down. It doesn't work that way. So to make it right with God or make a first time decision for God, please leave your seat and come out here right now. Right now. There's anybody like that, leave your seat and come out here right now. And I will pray with you in one minute. Do we have people like that? Very quickly. I'll give you one minute quickly. We're out of time. Anyone making this glorious decision? Don't be ashamed. Appreciate her. Bless you, sister. Bless you, sister. Bless you, my brother. I see you coming. Keep appreciating them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. You are encountering true wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming out. This is unto the Lord your maker. You will mark this day as a turning point in your life. Lift your hands and pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I ask you tonight to be the Lord of my life I repent of my sins and my old ways I declare that from today I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me and grant me this great wisdom from today I am a different person in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father thank you you have brought these ones by your spirit change them let this not just be an emotional experience change them in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you listen you will never lack wisdom in your life again in the name of Jesus Christ you are blessed please follow the ushers in one minute they'll have your details and we'll follow you up tomorrow 
by 5 p.m. at chapel. God bless you. Thank you, sister. God in the midst of his people, just glorify his presence. Oh, Bashaka Balada Baka Braga de Baladosa. Emmanuel, thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship him from everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. God in the midst of his people. Mighty. We hail you, most high. We hail.
that thou visitest him. Thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim and crowned him with glory. There is no one. There is no one. That conquered the grave lives in me. Help me worship us. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth. Your love that rescued the earth. Thank <laughs> you. 
like the men in the system we may breathe in and out but if we don't have the same life brothers and sisters there is a divine life Jesus transferred a divine life he said in John chapter 10 verse 10 he said the thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but I am come not to give you a religion not to make you Christians I am come that ye may have life. So we, a quality of life that has not been known. A life that is superior to this realm. John chapter 3 verse 31 says, He that cometh from above, whoever possesses this divine life, is practically, literally, above all. Hallelujah. So tonight we're going to sing one more song crying that the Lord will open the gates and the doors of revelation. Without his spirit we are only noisemakers here. Hallelujah. It's only by his spirit. Hallelujah. Never forget in your life, in your ministry, in your business, in your endeavor that outside of the spirit of God you have no existence. Hallelujah. Open up the gates. Open up the door. It's a very simple song. Open up the gates. Hallelujah. Just hold on. I want to teach you the song for those of you who don't know you hear the worshipers sing it once and then we'll follow hallelujah it's a very simple song prophetic song it says open up the gates the gates of revelation gates of insight in the spirit open up the gates open up the door now just hear the worshippers sing it once and then we'll open join in concert. Open up the gate. Open up the door. Open up the door. It's a pretty song. Simple song. A powerful song. Sing. Open up the gate. Contains deep revelation that cannot be exhausted in this realm. There are gates and doors where the archives and mysteries of the spirit are hidden. Lord, we confess that we are helpless without you. We declare our inability to help ourselves. Lord, we are confident that by your spirit you will communicate deep things into our hearts. Lord, our hearts are open tonight. 
bless our hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah bless you walk up to ten people tell them it's good to see your face again there is fullness of joy and at his right hand pleasures forevermore hallelujah the Bible says and ye shall know the truth hallelujah and he said the truth that you know will make you it will make you free hallelujah and we thank God for his grace is building us equipping us by the power of his spirit like my brother rightly said this is a training ground where God is building and equipping sons and daughters, those who will be the custodians of the next revival, the Spirit. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Appreciate the worshipers. Great people. Acts chapter 4, verse 16. Oh, let's start from verse 15 and when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves 16 saying what shall we do to this man it's a question for that indeed a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who dwell in Jerusalem the last phrase and we cannot deny it what shall we do to this man for that indeed a notable miracle a notable miracle had been done by them and is manifest to all those who are in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it look up tonight God is going to be challenging us very briefly hallelujah on the need to stand out as beacons of light and begin to manifest the kingdom the life the power the glory the audacity and the grace that flows from the kingdom that we represent hallelujah hallelujah now this was an interesting story because it was an event that followed the healing of the man at the beautiful gate hallelujah when he was healed by Peter and John it stirred up controversy in Jerusalem and when he got into the temple the scribes and the Pharisees suddenly saw the man he was sitting in an obvious position the Bible tells us that he had a spot at the beautiful gate and every time people passed to pray they would drop arms hallelujah and at a certain time during the hour of prayer the bible says peter and john went to pray and seeing this man he was begging for arms and peter said look on us the bible says he looked at them steadfastly expecting to receive something and he said silver and gold have i not but such as i have give on to you in the name of jesus of nazareth rise up and walk hallelujah and then the bible says peter reached out and grabbed him and he leaping stood and he ran into the temple jumping and leaping and rejoicing and there was so much controversy and on account of this they had to hold a meeting hallelujah because the apostles were now becoming obvious threats to their environment hallelujah and 
the scribes and the Pharisees felt threatened by the presence of certain people although they were not educated as it were they were not learned people hallelujah and they had to call them over to the Jerusalem council the council of religious people isn't it amazing that when Jesus walked upon the earth he never had problem with sinners and unbelievers his problem was with religious people hallelujah and when the saints the first fruit of the finished work of Christ walked upon the earth they didn't have a problem with demons and devils hallelujah their major problem was among religious people it's amazing how religion can resist the things that the Holy Spirit is doing they were men and women full of human understanding but had no comprehension of the precepts of the spirit for you to be a scribe and a pharisee you had to know the five books of moses the torah the pentateuch you had to know it off heart and moses in that prophesied and says a prophet shall god send to you was prophetically speaking about jesus christ the messiah and when jesus walked upon the earth although they had that in their head they still persecuted him until they killed him that's why jesus speaking in john 6 verse 63 said the flesh profited nothing he said it's the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profited nothing he said the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life and paul extending that statement said the natural man understandeth not the things of the spirit he said for they are spiritually designed you don't use your five senses to understand the things of the spirit because it gets to a plane where every revelation you are encountering will wrestle every sense of logic that you have so you must be able to ascend the heel of the lord whether or not your mind understands that's why we call it faith hallelujah that our life and our walk in this realm is absolutely hinged on the integrity of the one we are following and not necessarily on our degree of comprehension and what he's doing hallelujah and so he said a notable miracle i'm going to speak very briefly on what i title notable manifestation of sons notable manifestation of sons We've spoken a lot about the manifestation of sons hallelujah romans chapter 8 from verse 18 says for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of god hallelujah and the next verse says for the whole creation was subject to vanity not willingly but by him who subjected the same in hope talking about adam the first man handing over the rightful keys of dominion to satan hallelujah and so the earth groans and travails waiting for the manifestation of sins i needed to understand that all through bible history the only way that men give glory to god is when the deeds of god is seen and expressed in the eyes of men are you listening to me when no matter how supernatural a thing is if it ends in the secret God cannot be glorified are you listening to me because for God to be glorified men must be the ones to give him glory are you following me and therefore they must see and understand the goodness and the deeds of God and then as a response to what they see they will give him glory and give him praise and so when i talk about notable the word notable connotes being obvious being significant being outstanding worthy of note. the bible makes us to understand in acts chapter 4 verse 16 the apostles had been doing um great things while jesus was around the bible records that when he sends the 70 hallelujah that they went and came back and said even the demons are subject to us through thy name 
so it was not exactly their first time of experiencing the manifestation of the power of God however the Bible says this was a different one and what made it different it wasn't because the miracle was new it was because it was notable say after me notable it was notable done before everyone undeniable irrefutable beyond argument hallelujah a notable miracle and when the scribes and the Pharisees gathered themselves together because they said through which name did you cast this out and Peter began to preach a sermon and they brought themselves together they said brothers and sisters oh, well no sisters they're brothers praise God for ladies how come there were no ladies when they were conspiring to do all these bad things ladies that should be a thumbs up so are we agreeing that men are the cause of come on remember Eve <laughs> hallelujah remember Jezebel remember the mystery Babylon was not a man was a woman upon the horse can I continue okay remember the mother of Jesus <laughs> hallelujah okay that aside let's continue the Bible says that a notable miracle although they they didn't believe God they didn't love the things of God there was no human way they would prove that this was not so hallelujah notable manifestations of songs the Bible makes us to understand that special miracles he called them special miracles they were not regular miracles special miracles were wrought through the hands of Paul such that handkerchiefs and aprons were brought together the Bible says just leaving his body devils demons were casted out special miracles the manifestation of songs will not create the kind of ripple effect that the kingdom desires until everything about our lives become notable the secret of expressing glory to God through our life is that everything about our lives will be reckoned to be notable the Bible tells us that many men live long however there was a man that caught the attention in the Bible hallelujah what was his name Bible students sorry some people are saying Mel, Mel what hallelujah who is the oldest man in the Bible come on how old Expo. praise God now several people lived long but how come we don't preach about the other people that live long something was notable about the longevity of Methuselah the Bible tells us that there were many wise men I mean the spirit of wisdom and creativity in Exodus 31 rested upon Bezalel but the Bible tells us that there was something notable about the wisdom of Solomon it was so notable that Queen Sheba had to come from the east to reckon with the fact that there was something notable about this man and the Bible says when she came and saw the splendor of the palace and the manifestation of the artistry the creativity and the wisdom of the spirit the Bible testifies that there was no more breath in her and she said half of this was not told me notable manifestations of songs hallelujah notable there were many men who were men of faith in the bible how come every time we talk about an icon of faith we suddenly move to the father abraham notable manifestations the bible says that a notable miracle happened and as a result because it was notable if it was just a miracle they would try to deny it but they said a notable miracle everybody saw this man crippled 
and then one moment they saw him standing they couldn't deny it they couldn't say it was stage managed for he had been there a long time the notable manifestation of the sons will begin to silence the systems of the world you know why God is allowing them to see all the evil and chaos because when the sons manifest it will be notable traceable impact that they can see and know that at a time t there was darkness and chaos why do you think the bible tells us that there was darkness and then god said let there be light that that statement would have been skipped away in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and god said let there be light it would still make sense why did god have to contrast the darkness the chaos and the light is god's desire that we not only manifest as sons of light but enter a realm called notable manifestation undeniable manifestation unarguable manifestation of sons hallelujah when jesus walked upon the earth the scribes and the pharisees had been teaching you must understand they were learned people humanly speaking they were absolutely intelligent but for the first time they had a man preach and his context and expression was notable and the people took note they said who is this from whence comes this man who is this notable grace and the bible says he taught as one with authority and not as the scribes there was something notable in his life when he began to move there was something about his love it was notable hallelujah and when he climbed upon the mountain the bible says about five thousand people aside women and children followed him why because his manifestation was notable i needed to understand that john had manifestations hallelujah but there was something notable say after me notable obvious something conspicuous something um undeniable and the unbelievers testified they said we cannot deny it we cannot deny it this is too notable there's no way we are going to try to cook up a story to stop god from receiving glory is notable god intends that your life becomes a notable sign and a notable wonder such that no matter what angle people come they will say this life is too notable we cannot but deny the hand of god we cannot but deny the favor of god there were many people who worked in the ministry of helps and hospitality but the bible tells us there was a woman called docas notable hallelujah to the point that when docas died all the women were making reference they said no she had done see it wasn't just ordinary the way other people were doing she was a giver notable until we begin to move in notable realms of manifestations the world will find intelligent human ways the bible makes us understand that when jesus died they put certain people the military people to protect him hallelujah and if they suddenly came and saw the grave empty they would argue it and so god needed to do something notable the bible says on that resurrection morning i mean jesus had the ability to walk through and they would not see him at least peter did it peter walked out of the prison Jesus would have kindly gone out of the grave but if he, if Jesus just went out of the grave people will still argue it are you listening to me it had to be notable the moment a thing is notable it cannot be denied notable 
Hallelujah. Notable. I cannot look at this guy and say is a lady. No matter what scientific evidences I bring, this guy is a man because it is what? Notable. There are notable features that attest to the fact that this is a man. I cannot see this and call it, assuming this is not a Bible, and call it a living thing. This is a book. Hallelujah. This cannot be a human being. No matter what biological experiment I do, I cannot prove that this is a human being. Now listen. We live in a world where almost everything can be proven with science. Hallelujah. People are trying to prove whether walking on the Red Sea was genuine. And their scientists and physicists are trying to control certain things. The world is trying to disprove the fact that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. And right now, there's the argument over transformation in lives and whether or not people are really healed. When someone says he's healed, they say, just forget, don't tell us that lie. The end of all argument is a notable manifestation. A notable manifestation. Hallelujah. If the people had never seen the man at the gate beautiful, they would conjure theories. Hallelujah. And said the apostles went and cooked this up. But everyone saw him. They knew him. They knew his parents. Are you following me? His parents were known. And then when this man got up, it was a notable manifestation. Although they tried to argue, they couldn't do much. Why? Because it was undeniable. When you move in the realm of notable manifestations, even Satan will stop arguing about the fact that Jesus is Lord over your life. Satan gave a testimony about Job. Hallelujah. One of the few, if not the only places in scripture where Satan gave a testimony about a man. Satan gave a testimony that he could not break through the hedge of protection that was around you. No table testimony. Then the Bible says, you are a city. Said you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be what? A notable city. You cannot be hidden. He said, let your light so shine. I want it to be noticed. I want it to be notable. Because when men see it, and you let them know that I'm the author, then I will be glorified. That's why there are few cases in the Bible where Jesus healed the sick and did supernatural things in the hidden. There are few times, did you know, ironically, right now we have more miracles in the church than outside the church. But do you know when you study scripture, there were more miracles outside than in the church. Hallelujah. Notable manifestations of songs. The Bible makes us to understand that creation is waiting for the sons to begin to do undeniable things there are certain people that when you talk about them in the world system people can argue and say forget is this guy a real man of god just forget what they are doing however there are certain people that have stepped into a realm called notable manifestations that unbelievers believers alike no one understand that there is the hand of god upon their life we celebrate many evangelists in the world. However, there is a man called evangelist Billy Graham. Notable Kabo Satabaya. There was something about his life. Hallelujah. And as a result, whether the president of America is a Freemason or not, he would come to pay homage to this man called Billy Graham. There are many evangelists that have blessed the nations and especially Nigeria but we have one called evangelist Reinhard Bonke his name is almost like Coca-Cola 
when you call the name, people say, ah, I know Reinhard Bonke. No table manifestations. There's no denomination. It doesn't matter what they believe or what they don't believe that will resist the presence of Reinhard Bonke. No table manifestations. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? It's not enough to begin to manifest the life, the kingdom, the power. But we must step into a realm of undeniable manifestations. That when you are exhibiting the character of the spirit, it must be notable. Notable. If you are a giver, that you step into the realm of notable giving. Notable giving. That your name will be synonymous. Every time I call your name, what is notable about your life? Hallelujah. Bin Laden did a notable manifestation. Although it was evil, but it was a notable manifestation. You will never read the history of terrorism without mentioning his name. He earned himself that title. Notable manifestation. Hallelujah. A woman in church history called Mother Teresa. How many of you have read about her? Was she the only woman who loved people? Don't you love people? But there was something notable. Are you listening to me? Notable. Notable about her life. There were many apostles. Isn't it interesting how the Bible did not give detailed account of all of them? I wonder why. Because on the day of Pentecost, the Bible never said Peter received the Holy Ghost two days before the rest. How come some people did not make it the archives of their lives? I mean, the Bible dedicated two-thirds of his writing in the New Testament to just one man I think that's not fair enough room would have been given one one chapter for everybody to encourage diversity how be it there was a notable manifestation of an apostle hallelujah and tonight I've come to tell us that the world will stop denying the hand of God upon our lives when we step into no 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 when we before you say amen let me finish it when this is the condition when we step into that dimension of the notable manifestation of souls hallelujah there is no man by the grace of God almighty who will pass around here and deny the fact that kings and priests there is a gathering of eagles to the glory of God. There's no man who will deny that Jesus is Lord in this place. It's to the glory of God, I say it with all humility, that every time you step, there is something notable. We must get to that dimension where there is something notable in our lives. Are you listening to me? Notable. That your love life will become notable that every time they want to give an example of one who passionately loves the kingdom hallelujah they'll say Aaron do you know Aaron is an example notable if it is not notable then you will never be able to make impact and bring glory to the father hear me hearing is our father glorified when we bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Hearing is our father glorified. That when you become a notable mother. Such that it's not just your children. Who will attest to the fact that there's something about your life. Did you know that there are some families that. The children prefer their neighbor's mother to be their mother. Or their neighbor's father. Because there's something notable. There are some families that whenever you are free you want to go and relax there 
notable the life and the hand of God is notable there are certain people you want to be with the moment you have any spare time no matter how it inconveniences you you want to be around them there is something notable about their lives the question the Lord is asking tonight is what is notable about your life what is notable for the kingdom many of us have a little of power here a little of passion for God here a little of zeal a little of grace a little of um, the giving life a little a little but this Bible I need you to know that there were many people who were featured in this Bible but some were featured once and for all others were featured repeatedly in the Old Testament and they were featured in the part 2 of the Bible they couldn't be denied Abraham Elijah sorry and Enoch Elijah and who? Moses I'm sorry they had finished their course in the Old Testament what brought them to the transfiguration again? no table manifestations such that God used Moses to typify the law and he used Elijah to typify the prophets when God was showing me dimensions of his call upon my life one time I had a vision and God used two notable men of God to reveal to me the patterns that I would walk in and for years it bothered me I said Lord why did you use these people how many of you have had dreams where God used someone's face to teach you something when God is talking about love then you see why was it not your face hallelujah no table manifestations of sorrows the lord wants us to step into that dimension where we begin to move in notable dimensions of the miraculous notable dimensions i cried and i prayed i told god yesterday you know while i was just praying in the night expressing my heart to the Lord and I told him I said Lord take me to that dimension of notable a notable life where everything about my life becomes an object of conversation to the glory of the Lord hallelujah that people look and say why why does he talk this way why is it that um, every time he speaks there seems to be something notable there are many people that sing on stage I, I always say it can sing on stage and raise a song and as you are going back your song dies with you there the people who are clapping cannot even remember what you sang hallelujah and then someone else will come on stage and sing the exact same song and that song will linger in your spirit for days and weeks every time the holy spirit wants you to worship that's the song even if you don't know everything about the song it could be a phrase it will remain in your spirit and every time you sing you see the face of the one who sang notable there are certain meetings that when you enter you get blessed and you go out but there are certain meetings when you enter you see that the presence of God in that atmosphere is notable. Notable. Hallelujah. That when you sit, there is the consciousness that the glory of God is in this place. There is a consciousness that God in the midst of his people is mighty. How many of you have taken an unbeliever for a program? And this is someone that is a noise maker and will not be patient. And he said, I'll sit down for five minutes. And he sits down and after ten minutes, you see a sense of reverence and a contemplation within his, an intrapersonal contemplation. Something notable is happening to him. Hallelujah. The Bible makes us understand that on the day of Pentecost, 
something notable happened that was not the first time they were celebrating Pentecost are you following me now 50 days after the ascension of Jesus something notable happened and it attracted everyone to come and the Bible says that they saw men filled with the Holy Ghost and were speaking and when Peter spoke there was something notable about his speech and as a result 3,000 people 3,000 people came to the Lord hear me it's time for everything about our lives to become notable are you listening to me it's time for what everything about our lives to become notable that every time you stand and you minister the word there is something notable an identity that validates that Christ is at work in your life come Steve please play this guitar notable there are many people that play the guitar there are many people that play all of these instruments what is it about the man we call Steve Strings it's not because he sings unusual songs necessarily go ahead and play Steve notable there is something I know a lot of people professional people that play guitar but there is something notable hallelujah and every time you hear him whether you like what he's playing or not you cannot deny that this comes from a realm that is not of the earth there are certain people that when they speak their wisdom is notable the Bible calls certain people wise men from the east there were many men from the east but their wisdom was notable hallelujah there's got to be something notable about your life for the kingdom hallelujah tonight we are going to rise above that average and that ordinary life we are going to rise above that limitation of nominal christianity it's time for your christianity to be notable not just notable in church it's time for people to begin to argue and discuss about your passion for god it's time for people to begin to discuss the grace of God upon your life the workings of the spirit that every time they are talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit they tell them can you see how I covet Shea's dimension of intimacy there's something notable about her intimacy I've had the opportunity of counseling and talking with a number of people about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in their lives and there are about three or four of them that have attained a realm I call notable intimacy hallelujah that at the end of speaking with them I had to go back to God and cry and say God what 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 did these people do that brought you into that depth of intimacy hallelujah a notable life that every time people see you your life becomes a motivation because there is something notable every time they are talking about an example of a true servant of God can your name be called for notable kingdom stewardship every time they are talking about men and women who demonstrate um, what it means to be prosperous and yet godly can your name come in the midst of that notable discussion Acts chapter 4 verse 16 it says a notable miracle has been performed 
and we cannot deny it I look forward to the time when in and through my life we will keep our generation stand still and say do you have any other argument as to why you think Jesus will not be Lord on this earth where we will dismiss all the facts and figures and all the things that people use to deny the fact that Jesus is Lord I look forward to a time when a sorcerer and a diviner is doing whatever he has to do and then you step into that place unknowingly and the jazz stops walking notable cabo satire without speaking in tongues and making noise let me tell you the world is tired of our noise what they need is the notable manifestation of sons and so we can preach and sweat on stage and they cross their legs but the moment they see something notable they will arise and say what is this notable for as long as you love like unbelievers love Christ cannot be glorified because it doesn't make any difference when your love becomes notable then it will compel men to know that there is an ability at work in you that is not human for as long as your wisdom is regular and natural I look forward to a time when the government will run to the church and say we we are confused we don't know where to go politically economically and the church will say oh yes we know let it be as it were in the days of Daniel that when there was confusion and chaos in Babylon because the king forgot his dream and the king forgot he didn't even know the interpretation all the sorcerers and diviners failed and the Bible says that there was need for a man who had the spirit of God in a notable fashion and Daniel stepped out the king said I will kill all of you and Daniel said there's, there's no cause for alarm just give me one night I will bring a notable result and he got up in the morning and says oh king let me tell you your dream and he began to astonish him and he said I testify that the spirit of the gods I testify the spirit of the gods is upon him the Bible says when they were tested he was found ten times better ten times better was a testimony that the hand of God was upon his life the Bible talks about a man called Job he said Job was the greatest man in the east they were prosperous people the east was known for prosperity and wisdom how be it it was notable we must begin to make notable impact notable impact in our community when the church builds a borehole in a community and builds a school let me tell you something the government will have no option but to involve the church in the decision making of that environment the reason why we pray in tongues and shout and the world is not moved by our tongues and our revelation is because it is not yet notable hallelujah that every time you go to greet your auntie or your uncle they receive you with such warm reception because they have marked it that every time you greet them a door is open so there's something notable about your life the moment you say i am coming they get very excited do you know that there are some people you long for them to visit you there are some people you long for them to come and say hello because there is something notable about their lives we are going to be raising a cry i cried out my life yesterday i said lord 
a notable life my generation must know that a son an ambassador of the kingdom has stepped his feet upon this environment for the glory of the king for the glory of the king notable that your excellence becomes notable that your wisdom becomes notable that your life becomes notable that the grace of god upon your life becomes undeniable such that although you are not the firstborn in the family they will never make a decision without inquiring of you somehow they know that your impute is relevant not just because you are prosperous but because the hand the spirit of the lord is upon you hallelujah that in your department and in your faculty they will note you for certain things when it comes to the affairs of wisdom they know that the wisdom of god resides upon a citizen when the king of syria sent naaman with a letter and the king of israel was was disturbed elisha now elisha said oh king why are you worried he said send the man to me and let him know that there is a prophet in israel send him let him know that god has ambassadors who are still alive and are still doing well i look forward to the time when things are not going on in your room and your house and you step in and say lord prove that an ambassador lives in this room prove that an ambassador lives in this place where your life and every activity around your life becomes notable when they make you a faculty president or a departmental president or a pastor or a minister that there will be something about your dispensation that will enter the archives of history that when so 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 and so 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 person was here there was something notable how many of us desire that kind of life if you truly want to bring glory to the king then you must desire the notable manifestations of sons notable let me give you a testimony to the glory of god some years ago they brought a lady from congo who had some demonic things around her life very very terrible hallelujah and when that lady came she was supposed to come and see me i used to sit down near the sunday school building and i just sat there i was just meditating and as soon as this lady stepped close she wouldn't move further again and the people said let's go they said i'm not going and then at a point they forced her and the moment she stepped in just where i was seated she just started shouting she said god is in this place god is in this place god is in this place and that's how she fell under the power of god and i tell you the truth instantly i sat down i was sitting there and i said satan go notable manifestation of sons there are many of us that need to look at our parents and say i speak to you enough is enough notable and suddenly things begin to change around their lives and they look at you and say what is it about your life and then you let them know that he is lord and i live to bring him glory until your life is notable the king cannot be glorified through your life are you listening to me there's got to be something notable whenever people are in trouble that they can run to you because you have been noted for certain things whenever people need solutions they can run to you because you have been notable and the bible says it shall come to pass that the mountain of the lord will be exalted to a notable point and he said all nations shall flow to it because it will become a house of prayer it will become a house of solutions it will become a house of breakthrough 
a house of increase and that's what god is doing by his spirit in koinonia making this house a notable place notable for signs and wonders notable for impact and transformation notable for the manifestation of the law of the character of the spirit notable for the grace and the hand of god notable for raising giants and champions and great men notable for communicating the mind and the counsel of the spirit for every season and i call you tonight to join in this quest of having a notable life enough of the ordinary life enough of the life that people can argue and argue about and say we are not even sure whether he loves god or not let me tell you when people are arguing whether or not you are a christian your life is not yet notable hallelujah when people look and say femi sorry we are arguing are you really filled with the holy ghost just settle this for us don't answer that question go back and lock yourself and say lord my life must be notable there are many people who try to replace this notable grace by wearing suits and speaking good english none of this will cover for the notable hand of god for your life i mustn't wear nice suit and speak with color and say okay i'm here bless you in the name of the lord jesus um i can bless your life invite me to preach well in your church the hand of god upon your life ought to be undeniable are you listening to me the bible says when jesus was born there was a notable star there were many stars but there was one notable star and the bible says on account of that star people began to flood into that place because a star was lifted and it was directly above that house that the lord will make your life like a star that people will flood and come and say what is it about the grace of god upon your life what is it about the hand of god what wisdom is this what knowledge is this hear me if you don't convert this thing that i'm preaching you will live an ordinary life and you will end up being frustrated the secret of impact that will bring glory to god especially in this generation of westernization and controversy there are so many options we need a notable manifestation of sons a notable manifestation of sons that when we are talking about givers the world will not dare say that they are on the top of the list in showing welfare and hospitality that the church will arise whenever there is disaster before the government finish their meeting who have sons of the kingdom who are empowered to step in and help the nations the notable hand of god upon our lives we look forward to times when when doctors conclude about people the church is already working in that dimension right now there are several sicknesses that even the hospital cannot diagnose and they tell them look I don't know what to tell you try god that's the only thing i know just try it's my desire that every one of us step into this notable lifestyle a notable lifestyle noted by believers and by unbelievers that the community in zaria the community in Abu, the community in Kaduna State, the community in Nigeria will know that He reigns through your life. You know, every time we sing that song, Lord, You reign forever. When we get to the place that says, You reign, You reign, You reign, You reign. One night I was singing that song and when i finished singing suddenly my spirit i had a voice saying you reign 
so I twisted the song a little then when I sing you reign after a while I switch it I say I reign I reign I reign cause you reign I reign I reign I reign cause you reign the scripture that John Fah shared he said the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty and begins they are not the congregation of the small God calls you mighty it's a meeting of mighty men and God is saying mighty men how come you have not delivered the poor and oppressed why are things going on as though you are not alive Archbishop Benson Idahosa a man who lived a notable lifestyle during the popular Benin witch festival you will never talk about the history of revival in Nigeria without talking about the Benin Witch Festival and the impact of Archbishop Benson Idahosa. All the witches were going to come from the world and gather in Benin for a conference. And Idahosa said, not when I'm alive, not when I'm in Benin, it will not hold. Notable audacity. And the media challenged him he said it will not hold and a few days or about a day to the meeting they had to call a press conference of the chief of the witches this is recorded on video the chief of the witches and archbishop benson idahosa and they sat down and the media people interviewed them they said all kinds of things and when the presenter was about rounding up it also said wait don't round up i have something to say and he turned and looked at the man and said before the whole country answer now are you a witch be careful as you give this answer because you may fall down and die now are you a witch answer the country and the man kept quiet for a while this was a king of the witches here in Nigeria from India, Asia, all over. And Idahosa said, I'm listening. Guess what the man said? No. Idahosa said, you can close the program. An ambassador. Alive and active. What a notable life. He was told that at a point he was traveling and armed, rob armed robbers blocked them hey come out lie down and he told he was surprised the driver was afraid he told he, he said park he told the driver park and he came out and dressed his clothes and the other brothers said, lie down lie down. and he looked at them he said three things must happen to you now you are going to choose either to be paralyzed to die or to be blind but what must happen to you right now now listen I'm not just saying this the Bible says follow them who through faith and patience what kind of life is that hallelujah it was said of Bishop Oedeko that armed robbers came and kidnapped his daughter and they were running out and he said if I am a servant of God they will not cross my gate as soon as they got to the gate something happened they started arguing with one another and they brought back the child do you believe this let me share with you a testimony to the glory of God I've shared the testimony we're lying down peacefully in our house when a thief came and entered and when he entered he went to uh, the table where we keep our laptops and he carried my laptop and when he carried it before you know my brothers got up you know tried to pursue the guy the guy ran opened the door and ran away and it was in the middle of that chaos i woke up and i said what's happening and he said the thief had gone away with my laptop and i looked and there was no laptop and i got up i said well lord two things will happen the laptop will come back or you give me money to buy a new one in any case you are lord hallelujah 
and then suddenly i saw a vision of an angel and he just did this with his hands and i didn't say anything hear me friends god is my witness they are here to testify seven hours later that laptop was back on the table we didn't raise any alarm the people in this in the in our neighborhood took it upon themselves and they pursued that arm robber and went to his house he hid it under the carpet in their house they brought it out this was the case i was counseling people in school when they called me and said please come they had to go and bring his brother in um where, um, the military cantonment what do we call it basawa and he came wanting to come and just plead with me and the guy packed his things and ran out of zaria a time will come when somebody wants to harm you he will reconsider and say is he worth it is the is he worth it the word of god says touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm when you begin to say ah witches are disturbing me devils are this and that will you press into god to a notable dimension where the demons and devils will reconsider and say is he worth it or are we trying to frustrate ourselves for nothing that you become so excellent and blameless that your that your lecturer will have no basis of implicating you the bible says they look for an occasion to implicate daniel and they didn't find anyone rise up on your feet it's a communion service so we we'll have to pray so that we'll quickly take the communion go ahead and bless the lord Notable manifestations of sons. Go ahead and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead and bless his name. And say, Lord, notable manifestations, notable from today by the hand of God. The grace of God upon my life is notable, 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 notable. The wisdom of God upon my life is becoming notable. Go ahead and pray. My world life is notable. My understanding, my insights to the word is notable your prosperity upon my life is notable the goodness of god upon my life becoming notable over the works of my hands notable go ahead and pray pray for your ministry pray for your life pray for your fellowship pray for your business for your group notable
When our lives become notable, then the world will reckon with the fact that God is at work in our lives. When our lives, when our passion for God, when our zeal for His house, when our giving, when our the manifestations of His grace, His power, His wisdom, when it becomes obvious, undeniable, then there will be no argument again. It's foolish to argue with notable results. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now tonight is a communion service and we're going to be taking the communion. Now, I want you to take the communion with understanding and revelation. And I'll be reading two scriptures very quickly. John. John chapter 6. Brothers and sisters, I'd like you to cherish what God is doing in our midst. He's truly making us kings and priests unto our God. Hallelujah. Verse 35, John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Hallelujah. Verse 53, just jump quickly to verse 53. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, Ye have what? No life in you. It's not talking about the biological life. The manifestation of the divine life that will make you notable. Notable. He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth with me and I in him. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying for every time you partake of the communion, you reenact you re the revelation of your oneness. Are you listening to me? Every time you take the communion, you realize that you is in the realm of the spirit. There is a renewal. Of the fact that you are one with Christ and that you are a possessor of the God life a life that is beyond sickness a life that is beyond failure a life that is beyond weakness are you listening to me the divine life above and beyond the limitations of the flesh very quickly let me show you something in 2nd Corinthians I understand for many of you who have observed you will notice that there has been an escalation of the death of fathers how many of you have taken note of that people's fathers just dying and the rate at which people are falling ill and falling sick but the Bible says there is a bomb in Gilead I want to show you a spiritual mystery tonight turn with me Sorry, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11. How that the communion is a spiritual principle that is an antidote to sickness, an antidote to weakness, 
and an antidote to the plague of death hallelujah verse 23 for i have received the, of the lord that which i also i delivered unto you that the lord jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is did he say this is bread he said this is my body which is broken for you broken for your sickness broken for your weakness broken for your limitation are you following me now he said do this in remembrance of me after the same manner also the cup and when he had supped, saying this is the cup of the new testament in my blood these do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me hallelujah follow me to verse 28 but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh judgment to himself not discerning the lord's body verse 30 for this cause stop for not taking the communion with the understanding and the revelation of what it is empowered to do there are three things that happen for this cause many are number one weak many are number two sick and many sleep so when the communion is taken with understanding and revelation it gives you supernatural strength as ordinary as this looks humanly this is just bread and cake or, or drink or whatever but that there is a revelation in the spirit that this is what the bible calls the bomb in Gilead that when there is a plague a plague of weakness a plague of sickness the miss the lord's body that his body was broken in exchange for your strength in exchange for your weakness in exchange so taking that reenacts in the realm of the spirit the blessing of strength the blessing of health the blessing of longevity are you following me now and so we are taking this communion tonight with the understanding that there will be a supernatural impartation of strength spiritual strength mental strength and physical strength and we are taking this that by the revelation of Jesus Christ his body broken for us that no sickness listen to me no devil no demon will survive your body as you take off this communion and lastly that with this communion we end the plague of death over our lives and our families listen you need to believe this there is many people suffer because we do not understand the principles that god has put to address certain issues there's no point arguing over what god has said the mystery of the communion hallelujah the worshipers will lead us we'll quickly do this as we share please if you don't get just be patient i hope the cops go around i invite the ministers please as many just come we have one two three four five six seven eight nine seven twelve we need at least 12 people please hallelujah at least 12 people praise god father in the name of jesus i pray over this communion this is ordinary drink and bread but we declare that the impartation of the holy ghost comes upon it in the name of jesus that as we take this communion tonight it becomes a supernatural antidote against weakness we banish weakness even that by the mystery of the holy communion in the name of the lord jesus we banish sickness from our camp we banish sickness from the body in the name of the lord jesus and father every covenant of death 
upon everyone's life and over our families as we take the communion and end comes to it let the plague stop in the name of the lord jesus therefore we bless this communion and we call it anointed in the name of jesus servants of god you can just speak it and walk around we may have some station some people should service those outside please do that quickly don't take it yet just take the cup and the bread hallelujah please let's have more people yeah, Pastor, you can have this. Let's have some people go outside. Please do it. Make it snappy. Just make sure you have the, the bread and the cup. And begin to pray. Pray a full. Yes, Pastor Shell. What is happening in this place? Please let's make it snappy. Make a baraka tabara da bosha. Man to soto paga da balara basha. Reke tala da bosha. Man to soto reke te balara basha. Reke te te balara basha. Paga da balara basha. Reke la balara basha. Reke te te bosha. Just pick the cup and the bread. That's what we call. You are born in the midst of the Lord. But on the tree, you have to say, You have to say, You have to say, You have to let's do it very quickly very quickly let the ministers help out just ensure you have the bread and the cup inside outside hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to pray and express your heart what you're trusting that the lord caused this to do in your life this is not just a religious ritual in one minute I like this communion to make sense to you. Please, the welfare, let's have more. Looks like there are still people more. As many who have, even if you don't have, you can get the bread. Let's, let's save time. If you've not gotten the cup, please just lift your hands. Alright, please locate them and let everyone have it. The 
There's more of the cup here. We're taking the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of us have not gotten the cup or the bread? Hallelujah. Please, can we make this snappy? Let's do it really fast. Just keep your hands lifted. Please locate them and, and the ministers turn so that you can. The Bible says that Jesus said if you eat. Please, um, Shade, there are people here. Is it the cup or the, the bread? Okay. Please, the bread, just pick a piece and pass it around very quickly. Pass it around very quickly. Father, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that this is a sacred spiritual exercise. We are taking this to end the plague of death, to end the plague of weakness, to end the plague of sickness. He said we should do this in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now together we are going to take the bread and the cup. Even, even if we've taken it and you've not gotten it, um, you can take that later on. Who has the bread? I see that they are not. Okay, please. Careful, sorry. I think you can get and just get another one and Jimmy has one there please I need everybody to have it let's do it quickly tumors will die growth will go demonic oppressions will leave plague of death will end who has the bread I'm not sure the ministers have the bread please are you done okay do so quickly please do we all have this? Do we all have this? Please let me have the remaining. So you can pick one for yourselves. That's all right. Just okay, here's the bread. Do we have any? Who doesn't have? Okay. Everybody. You've taken your own. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look up please. This is ordinary bread. Hallelujah. And this is ordinary wine or juice or zobo or whatever it is. How be it? I need you in one moment to cease looking at this as just bread and a cup. There is a spiritual mystery. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, if you eat this, it's my flesh. And if you take this, it's my blood. That for every time you do this, you enact a mystery. An inexplainable mystery in the realm of the spirit. That dispels weakness, dispels sickness, and dispels death. And after tonight's communion, we will say, oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is your strength? Enough of dying around. It's happening all over the country. Enough of sickness and weakness. Lord, we believe. 
father anoint this even as we take it we bless it in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit together now let's take it go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit please pass the cups round go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit say the mystery of the body and the cup go ahead and challenge weakness challenge sickness challenge death in the name of Jesus we are obedient to the ordinances of God challenge every unfruitfulness over your life over your family members no more death no more loss no more weakness every pain challenge it in the name of Jesus for when our obedience is complete God is committed to perform when your obedience is complete, cancers die in the name of Jesus. Tumors die in the name of Jesus. Cycles be gone. Demonic compression be gone. Every mental problem by the power of the communion. Where is thy sting? We banish the hand of death. We banish the plague of death. We receive strength, strength, energy, vitality, longevity. So we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, thou preparest a table for us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our heads with oil and our cup of us hope. Surely goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Hell, wealth, longevity, longevity. Hallelujah. Declare, I shall not die, but leave to declare. Go ahead and declare, I refuse it. So kataba, don't take it for granted. Don't take what you are doing for granted. We are operating under instruction. Don't take it for granted. We refuse to mourn any dead. Let the plague of death be taken far from the camp. For there are ambassadors. The plague of death. The plague of accidents. The plague of unrobbery. The plague of war, we decree it, we are preserved. According to John 5, in famine, we are preserved, preserved from the spotted thoughts of men. We come from above, we understand the principles by which our kingdom operates. And we enact that principle. Let it be registered in the realm of the spirit more than conquerors. We live long, we live strong, we live happy, we live healthy, graceful, favor, peaceful, making it back. We fear no evil. We are immune against robbers, immune against wicked men, immune against sickness, immune against demonic oppression. There's freedom by the power and the revelation for when our obedience is 
complete. Then God watches over his work to perform it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a practice that you can go on with. Don't idolize it. That's the trouble with people. When we begin to do things like this, we idolize it. It must be administered within the context of the world. Lord, we thank you for tonight's meeting. We'll be noted the goodness of God upon our lives will be notable. The hand of God upon our lives will be notable. The favor of God upon our lives will be notable. The character of the Spirit upon our lives will be notable. Our impact and increase the undeniable result will be notable. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, this is your first time worshiping with us very quickly. We are out of time. I'd like you to leave your seat and walk up quickly. Inside, in the overflow, outside, appreciate them. If this is your first time, please, I'd like you to come out. Just walk up. We love you. We respect you. Please appreciate them. Do it very, very quickly. We are out of time. Hallelujah. i like you to jump up like a general and come very quickly. We are the light of the world. A city. Wow. Appreciate them. Come on. Give them a big, big koinonia welcome. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to have every one of you. Can we appreciate them? Give them a big, big koinonia. God bless you. Hallelujah. It's our joy and pleasure to have you worship with us this is koinonia god is doing great things hallelujah bringing us into points of intimacy with his spirit and equipping us to make great impact for the kingdom hallelujah and so i welcome every one of you thank you so much for making our time we love you we respect you very quickly we want to pray and prophesy i need you to understand that every one of us here is anointed full of God's spirit and when we bless you you are blessed hallelujah so we want to stretch our hands and pray for you and all I like you to do is just receive it into your spirit and believe saints of God let's stretch our hands from all over the building dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, Grant me the discipline.